So let me introduce you pointer networks, which I've explained the applications of that in uh, bottom-up constituency parsing and many other problems. And they can implement it in Keras because some beginners are, are comfortable to work with Keras. But I myself, uh, I, I prefer to work with PyTorch, even for, for small projects. And so if you want to implement it in Keras, you should know that Keras has uh, uh, the high-level architecture APIs and at the same time, low-level training APIs. So if your problem, if your uh, intention is like that, then Keras is a good fit. And of course, it's on top of TensorFlow. And you know, TensorFlow is very basic. It's on top of GPU and CPU and TPU. So Keras does not provide low-level operations such as tensor multiplications and convolutions. It relies on a specialized, well-optimized tensor library that serves Keras's backend engine. So, for example, in the reason that, for example, we, we need we like pointer networks is that we can do something that uh, we, we couldn't have done that with uh, standard approaches. For example, predicting the next digit, one, two, three, four. What if, what if the number of digits goes from one to one million or one trillion? Then we need lots of hidden states. So that's not practical. That's why we need to uh, somehow constrain that and uh, dependent on the, uh, the size of the input if we should act on that and know how many states we need. So in this type of questions, we will talk about uh, uh, pointer networks, which is really an amazing thing that is discovered in supervised learning. And so we want to predict the next digit. You know, in, in Keras, we define your model, you add it, the layers that you want, then compile it, and finally you fit it. So when prediction at the inference time, you just say predict your data that you want to do, you want to predict. And you return the sequences like this. You, you, add, uh, you, model, you add any layer that you want. For example, you are adding an NL, LSTM. And you know, there are different ways to work with these uh, um, LSTM and in general, recurring neural networks. For example, if it is a music generation, you, you need to work with one, it's a one too many. And for sentiment analysis, sentiment classification, if for example, you have a sentence and then finally one label for each sentence. And name entity recognition, NER, it's many to many. For example, here is a person, here is location, and so on for each input in the utterance. And for machine translation, if you have watched my playlist for machine translation, it's just many to many. You have a sequence and you have an, an, a target sequence and you, you align and then you uh, create the context and attention and finally you, you create some outputs, what is the probability of, a, of each token. So this is the architecture of LSTM unit. You know, these cells, cell states, these are for long dependencies. For example, you connect different words in a very long sentence, but in hidden states, these represent very short things, things that are very um, close to each other, tokens in a sentence that are very close to each other. So this is a good expressive way. To def uh, for for that, so the LSTM unit, as I said, it has a long-term state and short-term state, and it has a current input, and we have an output.
So there are two applications in the original paper of pointer networks in 2017. Uh, uh, one of them is <coughs> Delaunay triangulation. You know, Delaunay tri triangulation is very important for computation of Floyd dynamics for those mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, those uh, people who want to do finite element analysis or or even finite volume method, or even finite difference method. Not finite difference, but uh, but finite volume and finite, <clears throat> uh, especially finite volume method. It's very important. And in mathematics, in, in applied mathematics, it's very important. And also, finding convex hull. This is really still, it's so amazing that still we have a challenge with this computationally. But pointer networks can help a lot. So we have, for example, P1, P2, you see, there is an order. And we want to, we want this, for example, when we say P1, P2, P3, we have covered this triangle. And there were triangulation. And many different uh, triangles are gathered together and in order to understand that, we define an architecture, we take advantage of the attention modules, but for each of the decoder outputs, we see what is a probability to, for, for each of the hidden states. For example, we, uh, what is the probability of this and this? What is the probability of this and this? And this or this, and then uh, at each so at each time step of the decoder, for example, time one, we see that oh, it is uh, pointing at the first. At the f at the second decoder time step, we notice that the probability of the fourth one is higher, uh, and so on. So you see how we we use attention in order to handle this problem. So it's content-based input attention. Everything is as simple. Everything is as standard as uh, as usual. So we have these uh, decoder, encoder, and decoder hidden state. This is encoder hidden state. This is decoder hidden state, and we merge them as usual. This is this is just uh, we create the context and then we create the. Mm, attention so so d prime is a linear combination of ej and now how we how we use that attention as i said for each i you see which j is good for each i we see what is a probability of each j for example if j is is one if j is two for different uh, j we have different probability. And we use softmax to make sense of probability because it's sum to one, so it's a probability. And so uh, we can implement this in Keras just using three modules. The first module is attention, then decoder, and pointer elastia. And we are using Keras 2.43. And uh, so the attention class, so instead of N N uh, and that we use in PyTorch, our, our, we, are, we are inherited from Keras layers layer. And we are using that. So uh, the, the, the initialization is standard. So you have, you want to know the weights and you want to know uh, in, in the call, uh, we have W1. W one, e, W two e, and this is implemented here. We add them, and then we give it to tangent hyper hyperbolic, and tan edge is here. We give it to tan edge, and after that you give it to softmax. So here is the softmax, and uh, the dot product uh, with v is here. So. Uh, we give it to, and then we uh, we reshape it because uh, we can import uh, Keras backend as K, so K is our backend, and that's it. The decoder is is very simple because we just need to call the LSTM 
and it returns the decoder output. So in the pointer LSTM, the last module from those three modules that I set, it, the attention, we have implemented attention, decoder, so let's just build it. So in order to build that, we say that self.decoder LSTM go backwards. And uh, so the step function in Keras and in repeat function in repeat method uh, is just repeating. And so we run as usual, I mean the usual boilerplate plot code that we always write. And then we, as I said, we define our model, then we compile it, then we fit it. And finally, we save the weights of the model. So it's like, very much like PyTorch, but now very simplified. Everything is simplified and sometimes black boxed. And that's it. This is the implementation of a pointer in using Keras.